Hello everyone, I'm Yannick Beau, Director of Products and Applications at Numeca. And today I'm going to show you how you can run the full CFD simulation workflow for a turbo machinery application in Omnis. As you probably know, Omnis is Numeca's new generation of computer-aided engineering environment that integrates all the tools of the simulation workflow from geometry import to results analysis. So for this demonstration, I've imported in my project a geometry of a turbocharger that includes a centrifugal impeller connected to a volute. The first step consists in linking the CAD definition of this geometry to a new turbo machinery configuration. There are a few elements to link, the curves that define the hub and shroud, the ones that define the blade leading and trailing edges, and the blade surfaces. So I'll hide the volute part, and I'll start selecting the shroud curve. So the, the process of linking the geometry to the, the turbo machinery configuration has been greatly improved in terms of user friendliness in Omnis. And as you see, I only need to uh, select the element that I want to link in the user interface and click on the icon of the family tree that corresponds to the object that I'm linking it to. So I'm linking the hub curve. Hub and shroud curves are linked so that now the channel is automatically created. I'll do the same with the blade surfaces. So I'll isolate the blade. So for the blade, as I said, we need to link the leading and trailing edges. For this geometry, I don't have an edge that defines the leading part of the, of the blade. So I need to create it. In Omnis, we have some uh, geometry modify and repair tools. I'll use this one, which split a part of a surface with a UV curve. And I'll create the leading edge here. I'll select this leading edge and link it to the leading edge. I link the trailing edge. And I'll select all the four surfaces that forms the pressure and suction sides of the blade and link them to the blade surfaces. So here you can see already in the meridional view that the channel has been created and my blade is linked. We can also see in the 3D family view the turbo machinery configuration that is fully created and linked. For auto grid mesh generation, the blade needs to intersect the hub and shroud curves. If we zoom in here, we see that it's not the case, but in Omnis, we have a very easy way of expanding the blade surfaces so that they automatically intersect the urban shroud curves. So you can see it has been done here. Now I need to select my uh, row object and I'll start configuring or set up some of the parameters that define the machine that I'm studying. So here in terms of row type, I'm studying a centrifugal impeller. The number of blades is 15. The blade is indeed a rotor, and I'll add to this blade a tip gap with a size of the tip gap of one millimeter, both at the leading and trailing edges. Since I'm finished, I'll click on this button. This button automatically creates a domain and a mesh setup for the configuration that has been linked. I'll repeat the exercise for the volute. So for the volute, it's slightly different. I'll create first an assembly, a generic assembly that I will name Volute. In this generic assembly, I'll add three boundaries, a boundary that will correspond to the rotor stator interface, a boundary that will correspond to the walls, and a boundary that will correspond to the outlet section. I'll change the boundary type of the outlet to outlet, and the one of the rotor stator to rotor stator. As you see, the process is similar. So when I create boundaries, family boundaries, we have an icon red, which means that the, the CAD definition has not been linked yet. I will uh, show the volute up in my uh, 3D view, and I'll select all the elements. So here I have all the surfaces that forms the walls uh, that, that, uh, that define the volute. I'll select all of them with the square selection tool and link them to the wall. What I see that I miss the two remaining surfaces, so I don't have any surfaces for the rotor stator interface and for the outlet section. For the outlet section, similarly to the CAD repair tools or geometry repair tools, we have some create tools. So I'll use a tool that creates a disk from a set of three points. I'll select three points at the outlet of my volute, and I'll use, I'll use this geometry to link to the outlet boundary. 
For the rotor stator interface, it is slightly different. I will not link any geometry yet. You will see that we've implemented a process that creates automatically the rotor stator surfaces from the outlet of the impeller part. So I'll keep it unlinked here. I'll do the same exercise, clicking on this button to automatically create a domain and a mesh setup. So at this stage, everything has been prepared on the geometry context to, and I can switch to the, the, the next context. I am now in the mesh context and you can already see an added value of Omnis since it has a common user interface for every context of the simulation workflow. I find back the same interface, user interface, as the one that I had in the geometry context. So we can find back the meridional view, the 3D view, and on the left hand side, the family tree with the property panel. So the objective of this demonstration is to, is to demonstrate a, a combination of a multi-block structured mesh for the impeller part with an unstructured mesh for the volute part. I will start by focusing on the structured mesh for the impeller part. So let me hide the mesh setup of the volute for now. So to generate the mesh, the multi-block structured mesh for the impeller part, we will use R. The raw wizards allows with a few parameters to generate already a high quality multi-block structured mesh for any type of turbo machinery. You can see that already in the wizard, we have some parameters that are already set because I set them in the geometry context. So it's one of the power of Omnis being a single environment for all contexts. Every setup that I did in the geometry context are propagated to the next. So I can find back the fact that it's a centrifugal impeller with a periodicity of 15 and that this type of row is a rotor. For the sake of the demonstration, I will generate first a coarse mesh. So I'll reduce the number of flow paths in the row wizard to 45 and the grid refinement level to a minus 9. I'll also increase the size of the tip of the first cell size to 20 millimeters. And as you can see, the tip gap have, are already defined with one millimeter at the leading edge and the trailing edge. I can already apply the row wizard. And with applying the row wizard, you can see that the flow paths have been generated and a first blade to blade mesh is created. And this blade to blade mesh is already of good quality. The 3D mesh generation with AutoGrid 5 is very fast, but still all the workflows in Omnis, uh, namely the mesh generation workflow, simulation workflow and results analysis workflow are parallelized. So I can run them in parallel. I can control these settings in the uh, resource control menu. Here is my local workstation and I'll use, since mesh generation with the two grid is quite fast, I'll use four cores for generating the multi-block structured mesh. I will save my project and generate the multi-block structured mesh. So the, the multi-block structured mesh is now generated. I can show it in the 3D view. Let me put it full screen. I'll toggle the mesh and you can see that we already have a mesh that has been generated. The mesh is quite coarse, but that's the objective of the demonstration. And if we look at the mesh quality statistics, the mesh com comprises approximately 150,000 cells. We can see that the minimum orthogonality is about 30 degrees, which is excellent for this type of mesh. And the expansion ratio is about five, which is acceptable for a coarse mesh of, of this type. So I'm satisfied, I'm happy with the multi-block structured mesh generation for the impeller. I will now switch to generating the mesh for the volute part. So let me open back the mesh setup of the volute that has been generated. The first step is to position the seat point. The seat point is this element and it needs to be positioned inside the fluid volume. Then as I told you, as I don't have yet a closed set of surfaces that will create my, my fluid domain because I miss a set of surfaces for the rotor stator definition. Uh, I told you that this would have been created automatically. It's exactly what I'm going to do now. So the first step is to link the outlet uh, boundary that will form the rotor stator connection on the impeller side to the empty rotor stator boundary that I created before. So I create this boundary condition with this button. Now that the boundary connection has been created, I can hide the impeller mesh setup. And I see that a new folder appeared, a connected mesh generation. I click on prepare mesh connection 
First, it creates a set of surfaces, and you will see them here, that are created from the outlet part of my impeller and will form the surfaces of the rotor stator connection on the volute side. And second, you can see that it changed or automatically adapted the mesh refinement of the unstructured domain based on the mesh refinement of the impeller. So that's one of the very good advantages of Omnis Express for unstructured mesh generation. We can preview the mesh sizes, so the expected mesh sizes from the mesh refinement level on the surfaces of the geometry. That's what you see here. Again, always for the same reason, for the sake of demonstration, I will generate a coarser mesh than the one that is automatically proposed by the system. So let me hide the seed point. I will uh, in the mesh setup, I will change some parameters. So you have the option to generate either a mixed mesh with hexahedra, tetrahedra, prisms, and pyramids. But instead, I will switch to a full X mesh because it allows to reduce the number of cells with still having getting an optimum quality. And I'll increase the initial cell size, which is by default set to about 5 millimeters. I'll increase it to uh, 15 millimeters, so I'll multiply it by 3. And you see these 15 millimeters being applied everywhere. So, uh, what I will do then is for the rotor stator interface, I'll apply three levels of refinement. For the wall, I'll apply one level of refinement. And for the wall, I'll insert viscous layers with inflation technique. I'll insert a viscous layer with the same first cell size as the impeller part. And I'll activate the surface capturing for the rotor stator. So now I'm ready to generate the mesh for the volute part. So the process is the same. I select the mesh setup. I go to control. I define the number of cores that I will use for the mesh generation. I'll uh, use 10 cores of my workstation to generate this mesh. And I press start mesh generation. So the mesh generation is now starting. So this allows me to demonstrate also one other benefit of Omnis. Omnis is based on a client-server architecture. So while the mesh is being generated by a server, I can keep on using the user interface and start preparing the simulation setup. So I go to the simulation context and create a new simulation. Create a new simulation. I will call it course simulation turbocharger for example in omnis 4.1 we provide the open solver that supports unstructured meshes and combined meshes with a, some domains with a structured mesh and other domains with unstructured mesh so that's the one that we're going to use now i will add the two domains in my simulation setup and apply and close to create the simulation setup so now I find back again the same user interface and I'll set up the simulation very similarly to setting up a mesh setup, for example. So to set up the simulation, uh, we start by defining the rotating speed of the machine. So we now define the rotating speed at the turbo machinery axis level. So I'll change it to 10,000 rotation per minute. And this rotating speed is automatically propagated to all the rotating domains and rotating boundaries that have been automatically defined by the system based on the parameters that I said before. So for example, if we looked at the domain of row 1, we can see that this domain is set as rotating automatically because in the geometry context, we said that it was a rotor. So very similarly, if I select the blade uh, walls, so the blade boundaries, we can see that they set automatically to uh, rotating with a constant rotation speed and the rotating checkbox is uh, checked by default and the rotation speed is inherited uh, from the turbo machinery axis. Now the system informs me that the mesh generation of the volute has been uh, fin is finished, has been generated. So if I want, I can go back to the mesh context and look at the uh, mesh that has been generated for this volute. So I'll toggle the mesh. I can see that I have a mesh of a very high quality. If I, looked at the, if I look at the mesh quality statistics for the express mesh, I can see that the mesh is of the order of 1 million cells. The maximum skewness is 0 0.84, which is below 
the, the, the threshold of the Numica quality, so it's very good. And the ex expansion ratio is of about seven, which is also very good based on the Numica quality criteria recommendation. So I'm satisfied with this mesh. Again, I'll go back to the simulation context and I continue setting up my simulation. So I've showed you that I've set up the rotating speed of the rotating domain and I will set the boundary conditions. So for the outlet boundary condition, this is connected to a volute, so it's not an outlet boundary condition, but a rotor stator connection instead. For the inlet boundary condition, we will impose total quantities, so cylindrical total quantities, velocity normal to inlet, and I will keep the atmospheric static pressure. I'll keep also the default value for the temperature and the turbulence. I can also set the boundary condition for the volute, so I'll keep all boundary condition to their default value. I'll just set the outlet boundary condition to mass flow imposed with a mass flow of two kilograms per second. So I've set up the boundary condition. Um, what I can see too is that I can, I can also change some uh, uh, numerical parameters. So I'll select the simulation object and I'll activate CPU booster. So as you probably know already, CPU booster is a convergence acceleration technique. So it will speed up the convergence of, some, of my simulation which is very interesting for the sake of the demonstration here. I'll use also CPU booster in the multi-grid levels. What remains to be done is set the initial solution for both domains. So again, I'll select the domain, go in the initial solution tab, switch to cylindrical, and set the initial solution to something that I find, uh, let's say, realistic with respect to the configuration that I'm studying. I do the same with the volute part. So, so for the volute, I'll have a radial velocity of 25 meters per second, a tangential velocity of 20, and zero for the axial velocity. So now the boundary condition are set. I go to the control tab. I set the computing resources that I will use for running this simulation. So I will run this simulation in parallel on my local workstation, and I'll use the 16 physical cores that are available on this local workstation. So I press the start button and launch the solver. I don't have to wait and I can already switch to the results analysis thanks to the fact that it's a client server architecture and start preparing my post-processing analysis scene. And I will see this scene being updated with the solution of the solver in real time during the flow convergence, the solver convergence. So here I will select all the surfaces visible on the screen. So I'm selecting the volute wall surfaces with the impeller and hub, uh, the impeller blade and hub surfaces. And I will add a color contour, for example, a color contour of static pressure on these surfaces. So to create new probes, we have a probe toolbar. The Omnis platform offers several probes. It offers the possibility for the user to create local value and 3D local values, isolines, color contour, velocity vectors, ISO surfaces, cloud of points, Cartesian plot, and uh, integral and user-defined quantities. Here I'm adding a color contour of static pressure, and I'll create it. It takes about a minute before the solver starts iterating because it has to perform several operations among which the solver has to partition the mesh. So it has to decompose the mesh in, in this example, 16 partitions because I'm running on 16 cores. It also has to agglomerate the mesh to create coarser grid level because it's using a multi-grid strategy, both for the initialization and the flow convergence to converge faster. So now the solver will start anytime soon and we will see with the first iteration of the flow simulation, the color contour of static pressure that I defined being updated in real time with the latest up-to-date solution. So we see here, with the very first iteration of the solver, the flow solution being updated to uh, the value of the static pressure in real time. Uh, so we see that the solution is not very smooth in the first set of iteration. It's because, as I said, the solver is converging on coarser grid. This we can see and we can monitor the, the flow convergence or the convergence of the residuals. So we see that the solver has converged with the first grid level. So the residuals are dropped and it finished iterating 
on the second and third grade level, and now it's iterating on the finest grade level. So we see also that the uh, flow solution so gets smoother and smoother with the uh, solver converging to its final solution. The fact that and the capability of Omnis being a client server architecture and benefiting from this coprocessing capability allows also me to refine and adapt my post-processing scene with the latest up-to-date solution. For example, here I can decide to select the blade and the hub surfaces of my impeller geometry and to add iso lines of static pressure. So similarly to before, I'm opening the create probe toolbar and I'm adding now iso lines. And since I already see the range of variation of my static pressure in the 3D solution that is being displayed, I can set the minimum and maximum value of my iso lines. So as quantity, I'm selecting the static pressure and for example i'll set the range of variation of my iso lines between 80000 pascal and let's say 110000 pascal i create these iso lines and the next time the solver will refresh the uh, post processing scene as you've seen on the screen these iso lines appear here in the impeller part in the impeller region of uh, uh, my, uh, my my turbo machinery so before I conclude the simulation or the demonstration, I want also to present some more advanced uh, post-processing capability because we didn't stop at implementing the post-processing of the 3D view as you can see here. We've also extended the capability of Omnis results analysis to turbo machinery dedicated post-processing. And for example, we can perform meridional average on the meridional view. So here we can see the meridional view and I can plot a color contour on this meridional view and the color contour will correspond to the meridional average solution. I can do the same on a blade to blade cut. So these plots are added by default in the turbo machinery template. So if I open the blade to blade cut that I'm seeing here, it's a cut, if I click on it, it's a cut, a blade to blade cut at mid span. I can also show color contour and iso lines. So this is what I will do. I select the blade to blade cut and I add a color contour. For this example, I will add a color contour of relative Mach number, for example. And I can add this color contour on the blade to blade cut. And we see the relative Mach, Mach number of the configuration being plotted on a blade to blade cut. So this concludes the demonstration. Uh, I hope that with this demonstration, I was able to convince you of the benefit of the Omnis platform. In particular, the fact that it combines in a single software and in a single user interface, it combines all steps of the CFD simulation workflow for from geometry preparation to results analysis. It also combines in the same software the possibility to generate unstructured meshes alongside with multi-block structured meshes for turbo machinery application. And it has some advanced capabilities I mentioned, for example, one of them, which is the co-processing capability. So the possibility for the user to visualize the flow solution during the solver convergence, both to monitor that the solution is going, is proceeding as expected, and to uh, also for uh, unsteady simulation, to reduce the usage of disk space and the time that is needed to uh, uh, save the 3D solution and perform the analysis afterwards. So this concludes the demonstration. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to raise this question. Uh, otherwise, I wish all of you a very good day.